Good morning, Capital City family, friends, and guests. We have just a few brief announcements for you. Capital City Seventh-day Adventist Church would like to invite you to join us for our February sermon series, Still Rising, Stories of the Resistance, a Black History Celebration, hosted by our very own senior pastor, Pastor Damian Michael Chandler. We ask that you join us on Saturdays at 11 a.m. where we will be featuring a dynamic pastor each and every week. You can follow us on Facebook, YouTube, or find us at capcitysda.org. Winter Warming Center. Capital City Church was so honored to be asked by the city of Sacramento to become a warming center for the homeless and for those who have nowhere to go in times of storm. We're asking for volunteers for the following stations. Receiving, registration, refreshments, and overnight security. For more information on how you can help, please call 916-585-6511. ESL, English as a Second Language. Capital City Seventh-day Adventist Church will be teaching English and citizenship classes beginning March the 8th from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. via Zoom. You may register by calling 916-585-6511. Have you ever listened to a sermon and wish that you had a second opportunity just to get a little bit more? Well, here's your chance. Please join our pastor for what we call Seconds on Mondays at 7 a.m. for an in-depth discussion of Sabbath sermons. We would just like to remind you of our drive through food pantry that's open every Tuesday from the hours of 1.30 p.m. to 3 p.m. We're going to be having free grocery giveaways and there are several volunteer opportunities available. For more information, please contact us at 916-381-5353. Good news, church family. Capital City tribes are back. Have you found your tribe yet? Well, you can sign up for one of our small groups today. For more information, please contact Ella Tolliver at oliver at frontiernet.net or Tiffany Jackson at tjackson at riolindo.org. That concludes our announcements for today. For more information, please visit our website at capitalcitysda.org or find us on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram.
Good morning, good morning, and happy Sabbath. My name is Damian Chandler, and it is my joy, my privilege, my honor to welcome you to the virtual worship experience for the Capital City Seventh-day Adventist Church right here in Sacramento, California. Now, it's my, it's my job to welcome you, and I take my job seriously. So every single week, we start our welcome by welcoming our members. Now, members, you, you've been to our church before. I want you to imagine that it's welcome time. What's happening in the sanctuary? The band is playing. The praise team is singing. I really love you. I really love you. Because you first love me. Woo! I really love you. Yes, I do. That song is real. We really love you. And at welcome time, we would walk around and hug each other. So I thought to myself, I need to send you a hug. So I'm sending you virtual love right now through the screen. We missed you so much, and we can't wait to be with you again right here in the sanctuary. And then to our guest, as we say on a weekly basis, there's so many choices right now, so many worship services where you could go and be fed and, and experience the presence of God with another church family, but you chose to worship with us. And so to each and every one of you, thank you so much for joining us. And we pray that God ministers to you as we fellowship together in his presence. We send a virtual hug to you too grateful that you've chosen to be a part. Now, it is our favorite part of the worship service is the part that you get to participate in. It is the time when you get to be a virtual evangelist. You ask, what is a virtual evangelist? Well, the Bible describes an evangelist this way. There's this guy, his name is Andrew. He meets Jesus and his encounter with Jesus is so amazing that he goes and he finds his brother and he says, man, you got to come meet this dude. In the same way, God is calling all of us to be Andrews right now. God is going to minister to you in such a fantastic way, but you don't want to have this experience with Jesus alone, do you? So what I need you to do is I need you to call somebody, text somebody. I need you to send a, a pigeon or a smoke stick, smoke stick signal to somebody and tell them that they need to jump in because this worship is going to be life changing. Ah, and then if you're on Facebook, what we need you to do is we need you to share, 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 share this worship service with everyone, your friend, your foe, your family member, your neighbor, your coworker. And I'm praying over every single share that God will use it to draw someone to himself. Now on last week, you guys went over the top, 130 shares. And I think that this week, we can beat it. So come on and join with me in this share and share this worship service with everyone you know. We're absolutely grateful. Our last sermon series was entitled Hope Rising. We pray that you were encouraged as we talked about the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. Now, our new sermon series for Black History Month is called Still Rising, Stories from the Resistance. So uh, we know and we hope to introduce you to people who have made a difference in this world, who've used their platforms to change this world and draw their eyes to Jesus and also to justice. So we hope that you'll strap in. Today is going to be a good one. And we also hope that you are inspired to be the change that this world needs. At this time, we're gonna hear a song. It is entitled the Black National Anthem. Join us as we sing, lift every voice and sing. Skies, 
our God where we met thee. Lest our hearts, drunk of the wine of the world, we forget thee. Shadow beneath thy hand, may we forever stand. Happy Sabbath, Capital City. It is our delight to come to you with family prayer this morning. We are Eric and Angela Fusilier, and we are just grateful for this time that we get to share with you. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you, O oh Lord, for giving us our life today. We thank you, O oh Lord, for providing for us a Savior in Jesus Christ. We thank you, O oh Lord, that we get to take this opportunity to come before you and to present our prayer to you. Heavenly Father, we acknowledge that you are our God and we are your people. Father, we ask that you would bless those who stand in need at this time and we pray where there is sickness that you would be the mighty healer. 
We pray, O oh Lord, that where resources are scarce, that you would provide all of our needs. And we pray as well that each one of us would be willing to be instruments of your will as you provide for others. Dear Lord, we pray for relationships today. We ask that you would bless husbands and wives, parents and children, our co-workers, and all of those in our communities where you have placed us to serve. Lord, we just want to say that we put our sincere and complete trust in you because we know you are God that cannot fail. Father, we also ask that you would forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Lord, we have come to you because we place no other in such high authority and with the power to do those things that are needful. These things we ask as we ask you would bless the speaker of the hours. We ask that you would fortify the speaker with your words, with your power, and your spirit. We pray that those words would be effectual in the hearts of your people. This we ask in Jesus' precious and holy name, and for Christ's sake, amen. The Bible suggests that everyone who is born on this earth is born with a purpose, a call, a call given to them by God. Now, not all of us chase after our call, but then there are some of us who pursue our purpose with reckless abandon. And because of that, the world is changed. Now, normally when we say a call, People connect that to being a pastor. But though not all of us are called to be pastors, God definitely gives every single person a pulpit. For Tino Mukarubindo, his pulpit is in the hospital. I pray that you are inspired by this young doctor's story. Happy Sabbath, church family. My name is Tino Mukarubindo son of Stanley and Mercy Mkorobindo, members of the Capital City SDA Church. I'm currently a student at the University of Louisville in Louisville, Kentucky. I'm also graduating next May with two degrees. The first is a Master's of Business Administration, which would allow me to become a leader within my field. And the second is a Doctorate of Medicine, as I plan to pursue a career as an orthopedic spine surgeon in the future. I believe early on in my life, God called me to ministry. I began by preaching and teaching and helping others in my community, but God ultimately revealed to me that he wanted me to be a vessel for him to heal others, which is why I chose a career in medicine. However, I had no idea just how difficult it would be to navigate the journey through medicine. When I came in, I found myself doubting myself, asking myself, is this something that I can actually do? And am I capable of successfully completing this journey? To make matters worse, when I looked around, there weren't a lot of people who looked like me. So I found myself wondering, God, is this what you really want from my life? Am I even supposed to be here? See, in my class, out of 163 students, only 6% were underrepresented minorities. In the field that I'm aspiring to go into, only 1.5% of orthopedic surgeons are black. However, God revealed to me that, son, this is another opportunity for you to minister and help others. See, the reason why there weren't so many people who looked like me in my field is not because we were not qualified or unintelligent. It was because this level, the playing field was not level. And so God revealed to me that I had to be a part of the solution. I created greater influence, which is stems from the Christian ideology that when you are a Christian, you are not called to this world just to get by. God has given you a greater influence and it is your job and your responsibility to impact those around you. And so Greater Influence became a nonprofit organization that aims to increase representation in healthcare. 
We put together a team of innovative young minds who work day in and day out to figure out how can we increase the information and resources that students have so they can get through this journey, not only knowing that they can succeed, but get to a point where they can excel. In addition, God has blessed me with many opportunities to conduct clinical research. I have had the opportunity to publish scientific papers already in my journey, helping advance the field of orthopedics and helping people continue to better their lives. And I believe that God has so much more in store for my life. My name is Tino Corumbindo, and still I rise. Our word is going to be brought to us by none other than Pastor Vandion Griffin, a longtime friend. Uh, Pastor Vandion is the Associate Youth Director for the North American Division. But more than that, he loves God with his entire heart, loves his family, and he knows how to preach the gospel. So I know that you are going to be blessed as we go through this worship experience. Now, family, we've experienced a lot of loss. And this week, unfortunately, our church family experienced loss again. And the loss of our sister, Sister Nellie Bumpers. What a powerful life. What a beautiful God-led life. And as we pray to, today, we, we pray for her family, for her daughter and her son, uh, for her friends who are hurting because of her loss. And we let them all know that as they walk through this valley, this church will walk through the valley with them. I pray that today brings you comfort and that it will remind us that one of these days real soon, death will be over and Jesus will take us home. Hey everyone. We hope that you all are doing well and staying safe in some of these crazy times that we're living. Here at Pine Forge Academy, we want to express our sympathies and deepest condolences to those who have lost loved ones during this COVID-19 season and also to other tragedies. We want you to know that God hears, God cares, and God is near. And with our Pine Forge love, we want to reach out to you to tell you how much we can. So we came up with this idea just to reach out to those who've lost loved ones during this time, whether to the virus or just to natural causes. We know that many people have been affected, myself included. So may you find healing and peace and solace in the words to these songs. Thank you.
Well, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that was in me, bless his holy name. I am so thankful um, that we get a chance to hang out for a little bit um, at the Capital City Seventh-day Adventist Church. God bless you real good. Uh, family of mine, and I know the Lord is richly blessing you as you continue to do the work that is assigned to your hands to do there in the Sacramento area. Listen, I am thankful um, for the um, awesome privilege to share uh, with you today, and uh, and I promise you, for those who already know me, know that I'm short, and so because I'm short, I will be short, but I do want to share a word with you today to uh, my friend uh, and uh, and my pastor, uh, one that uh, I can call on uh, in time of need, one that I can talk to uh, in confidentiality. I want to thank um, your pastor, um, Pastor Chandler, um, and to the First Lady Tans and the children. Thank you um, for the ministry that um, you have carried out so far there. Um, at Capital City, and uh, it is clear that God has assigned your hands um, to ministry, and uh, I just pray God's richest blessings to remain upon you and uh, and the Capital City Seventh Adventist Church. Uh, well, you didn't come to hear me go on and on and on and on about a long preamble. We, we want to get right to the word, and I understand um, that our theme is still rising. I want to approach it um, from a little, um, just a different angle um, for um, today's journey, and uh, and share with you from the book of John. The book of John is where I want to um, dig a trench for today's journey. John is the book, and I'm looking at John chapter 5, and, uh, and I want to read a few of the verses there in the book of John. John chapter 5, and I'm starting with verse 1 of John chapter 5, and here's what the word of the Lord says. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Verse 2, now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, of halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. And the Bible says in verse four, for an angel went down <laughs> at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Say troubled the water. Uh, whosoever then first after the troubling of the water stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had and a certain man won't you say certain man come on talk to me now say certain man and a certain man that's right was there which had an infirmity 30 and 8 years when jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case uh he said unto him Will thou be made whole? And the Bible goes on to say in verse 7, The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another steppeth down before me. Uh, Jesus saith unto him, Rise, <laughs> take up thy bed, and walk. And immediately, verse 9 concludes, the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. And on the same day was a day like it is at Capital City Seventh-day Adventist Church. And on the same day was the Sabbath. I want to talk uh, for a few moments under the subject, it's time to rise up. It's, it's time to rise up. Won't you bow your heads with me, Father? This is not my moment, but this is your moment. 
this is not my church, but this is your church. And these are not my people, but these people belong to you. And so, Lord, since you are in charge of it all, we want to hear from you. Speak to us and uh, speak through us. And we'll be careful to give you the praise, uh, the honor, and the glory. Uh, let every heart say amen and amen. It's time. Uh, to rise up. It's time to rise up. In in our text, we find Jesus on his way uh, from uh, Jerusalem up to Galilee. I love this because Jesus is on his way from Jerusalem up to Galilee, and uh, one of the feast days uh, was taking place. And, and the record is this. Hear me on this, family. The, the record is this. Uh, according to the law, that any man within a 21 month mile radius uh, was obligated to attend the feast days. Any any man that was within a 21 mile radius uh, of any of the feast days was obligated to attend the fe feast days. Now, 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 scholars weigh in heavy on this portion of the pericope, and they go back and forth on whether it was the Feast of Tabernacles or whether it was the Feast of Pentecost or the Feast of the Passover. Well, we don't really know. I tend to follow the latter, but what we do know is that Jesus shows up uh, uh, on this Sabbath at the capital. I mean, he shows up this Sabbath at the feast feast days uh, because uh, there is uh, a uh, there is someone who's in need of a blessing from the Lord. That's somebody that's time for them to rise up. Now, he doesn't show up not out of obligation. No, no. He doesn't show up out of obligation. Church, the reason why Jesus shows up is because he is in love with you. I need to pause here and just say this again. Jesus, he doesn't show up. Oh, yes. The record is that if a man is within a 21 mile radius of any of the feast days, he is obligated to show up. But this is not why Jesus shows up today, church family. The, the reason why Jesus shows up in your life, the reason why, young people, he shows up in your classroom, the reason why, young adults, he shows up in your relationships is because he loves you. Yeah, I, I don't know about you, but I'm glad that he shows up. And I just need to pause and share with some student uh, who is struggling right now and, and, and some, some young adult and some parent or uh, some husband or wife who is going through some issues and ch challenges right now and you feel like uh, you've been rejected and you're unclear on your self-worth or, or value. I need you to know from the very beginning that Jesus unequivocally is in love with you. I'll say it again. Jesus is unequivocally in love with you. And you need to understand that Jesus shows up in our lives. Jesus shows up in your life, not out of obligation. When Jesus shows up, he shows up because he's in love with us. And even if you're feeling like you've been rejected, even if you're feeling like you don't have any self-worth, even if you feel like you don't have any value, I need you to know that this love is not based on feeling, it's based based on principle. God is love. And because he loves us, he shows up in our lives. And I want to thank him for him showing up in my life. And I know I've got at least one testimony who's watching me right now. There's one saint who is watching right now who can testify that you uh, have experienced the love of Jesus Christ. And I want you to just wave your hand at this uh, uh, camera and suggest to everybody else that you understand Understand the power of the love of Jesus Christ. Jesus shows up and he doesn't show up out of obligation. He shows up out of love. Well, uh, the text says that Jesus shows up and when he shows up, uh, he, 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 he comes to a group of people who are hanging out in front of capitals. I mean, hanging out in front of this porch called Bethesda, having five 
porches and, and, and around this pool, around this pool where Jesus shows up, uh, the Bible says that there are all kinds of people there. There, there's some, there's some impotent folk there. There's some halt folk there. There's some withered folk there. There's some blind people there. And every last person is there waiting for the moving of the water, the impotent there and the blind and the halt and the withered all of them are gathered around this uh, pool called Bethesda and they're there waiting for this water to move there was this superstitious erroneous superstition that 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 said a certain at a certain time the uh, that an angel would would come down and and trouble the water and and whoever got in the water was made whole of whatsoever disease uh, he or she had. And, and scholars suggest that even when the water supposedly began to move, that many did not know what to do. Many had come to the point of complacency. Many had come to the point of being satisfied. Many had come to the point where they simply sat by the pool and never attempted to get into the water. Many of them simply said, I've been sick this long. There's nothing that's going to change in my life. As a matter of fact, they have been around the pool so long, scholars say that they started building shelters around the pool. No desire to get better, no desire to get healthy, no desire to rise up. They had become comfortable and complacent, just hanging around other sick people. And I just need to pause right here and suggest to many of us, uh, notice I didn't say you, many of us who have gotten to the point, even though uh, COVID-19 has hit, even though there's racial inequity, and even though uh, there's an economic downturn, for many of us, we have gotten to the point where we've lost faith in Jesus Christ, where we've lost hope in Jesus Christ, and we are just comfortable hanging around other sick people. They, they had no desire to change, even when the water was troubled, even uh, when they, uh, they, they, this erroneous idea of, of the water being moved and, and possibilities of being healed and, and, and ideas of actually rising up. The impotent and the blind and the halt and the withered would rather just remain around other sick people because misery not only loves company, it longs for company. And I want to suggest to everyone who's listening right now that you and I've got to get out of this mindset that it's just going to be what it's going to be. That's a lie from the pit of hell. You and I've got something that is greater. We've got something that is stronger. We've got something to believe in and something to hold on to. And not only do we have something, but we have somebody. And his name is Jesus. And Jesus is the one that can get us us out of our situations, but yet Jesus comes to the impotent, and yet Jesus comes to the blind, and yet Jesus comes to the halt and wither, and when he comes to them, they remain the same. Hear me on this now. I need you to hear me because we love uh, church people. We love being very churchy all the time. And we say, oh, when Jesus shows up, this happens. And when Jesus shows up, that happens. And when Jesus shows up, and I'm here to tell you that we've got to stop saying that. We've got to start telling people the truth. And the truth is when Jesus showed up in front of that pool, when Jesus came in contact with the impotent, and when he came came in contact with the blind, when he came in contact with the, uh, the, the, the halt and the wither, they did not change because they were comfortable in their condition. And is it true today that for many of us, we're comfortable not conquering the things that have been taken over our lives. We're comfortable not moving uh, in the direction that Christ has called us to go in. We're comfortable not consecrating our lives 
continually to Jesus Christ. We have just come to the point where it is what it is. And if that's your desire, may the Lord bless you. And may you enjoy the uh, eternity around other sick people. But that's not my desire. And I believe it's not the desire of those who are watching. I believe that there's somebody who's watching today who's ready to say it's time to rise up. I love this because Jesus is in the presence, hear me now, of the impotent, the blind, the halt, and the withered, and they do not change because they they chose not to change. And so Jesus moves away uh, from those who have no desire uh, to be any better, those who have no desire to have stronger faith, those who desire who don't desire uh, to be more faithful uh, with, with, with what gifts they have been given. Jesus moves moves away from those who have no desire to rise up, and he goes to this man who is uh, in a the in the right position. Listen to me now. I'm almost done. <laughs> I told you because I'm short, I'll be short. Jesus, he moves from this group to a man who was in the right position position. Uh, how do I know? Well, here's what the text says. The text says, uh, and a certain man was there, which had an infirmity, John chapter five, verse five, uh, an infirmity 30 and eight years, verse seven, verse six says, when Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case. See, see him now. Jesus goes to this man who's in the right position. Everybody say position. Uh, the first thing I need you to know is that because this man was in a position, uh, a position of humility, he garnered the attention of Jesus. Jesus saw him lying there and there was something different about him as opposed to the blind, the impotent, the halt, and the wither. There was something that was unusual about him. He was now in a position of helplessness. He was now in a position that said, Simply said, I need help. I can't get this thing done by myself. I can't move this thing by myself. I can't work out my relationship by myself. I cannot deal with these children by myself. I cannot manage my finances by myself. I need help. And he gets in a position, the right position, a position of humility that says, Christ, I need you to do what needs to be done in my life because I cannot do it. I've been like this for 38 years. And for many of us, it has taken us almost over half of our lifetime to finally get to a place where we realize we need help. The thing that is keeping us from rising up, and it's time to rise up, family. The thing that is keeping us from moving uh, to the next level, the thing that is keeping us from being confident in Jesus Christ is we're too arrogant to ask for help. And this man, he finally got in the right position. Everybody say position. He got in a position of humility. And the reason why this is important is that there are too many of us who are missing out on the opportunity to rise to the next level, the opportunities to experience the blessings of Jesus Christ because we're in the wrong position. Oh, we, 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 we're fussing and fighting even virtually. Uh, you, you're, you're, you're blessed to even be an elder. You're blessed to even be on the praise team. You're blessed to even be an usher. But no, that's not enough. You've got to address me as first elder. You, 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 you've got to allow me to be in charge of the praise team. I've got to run uh, the responsibilities uh, in the church. And what Christ is trying to get us, listen, I didn't say you, what Christ is trying to get us to do is get out of the wrong position and get in the right position. And the right position, church family, is a position of humility that says, Father, I thank you that you're willing to use me as an elder. I can't even fathom the fact, based on where I have been spiritually, not 20 years ago, but this past week, I can't fathom that you would want to use my voice to sing melodious songs to you based on my lifestyle. And I'm I'm not talking about 75 years ago within the last five 
to two to one to one day ago based on those kinds of issues that I'm having in my life and yet you still want to use me to be of service to you I thank you father and I humble myself before you so that you can continue to use me to your name's honor and glory and the only way you get their church family is that you and I've got to get out of the wrong position and get in the right position the position of humility and when we get in a position of humility it helps us to be prepared to rise up and for many of us it's time to rise up and the way we get there is we've got to get in the right position somebody say right position well, here's what I want you to understand, that when Jesus comes to this man who's in the right position, who's been there for 38 long years, the point of, the, of his age is to allow us to understand that it is highly possible for many of us to be where we are in complacency and unfaithfulness and arrogancy and pride. Uh, it's possible for us to live a life like that for over three decades. And what Jesus is trying to teach you and I, that it is keeping us, it is preventing us from rising up. And family, it's time to rise up. It's time for us to go to the next level in Jesus Christ. We get there by getting in the right position, a position of humility. If it makes sense, let me hear you say amen. So hear him now. He's in the right position now. And as Jesus goes over to him, and the text says, as when Jesus saw him lie and knew he had been there for a long time, uh, Jesus, uh, he does something that is so amazing. Jesus goes to this man, and the Bible says it very clearly uh, in verse in verse six. Jesus says the last part of verse six of John chapter five, will thou be made whole? <laughs> it's a question that Jesus is asking this man who's been uh, where he is for 38 years. He, he he's, he's a little different from the impotent, the blind, the halt, and the wither. Uh, he's in the right position, uh, suggesting that he needs some support, suggesting that he needs some help. He's in a position of humility. He's in the right position. He has the attention of Jesus, and now Jesus approaches him on the Sabbath, and Jesus says to him, uh, uh, do you want to be made whole? Now, y'all forgive me. I'm not the smartest man in the world, but Jesus seems to be asking a simple question that requires a simple answer. Will thou be, do you want to rise up? I mean, I mean, it's time to rise, but I'm not going to force you to rise. I want you to make a conscious decision. It's time to rise up, but do you want to rise? Do you want to be made whole? It's a very simple question that simply requires a yes or no. Do you want to be made whole? And instead of answering Jesus, we would much rather point number two, whine about our problems. Oh, Capital City, can you see him now? I mean, he got the attention of Jesus because he got into the right position, a position of humility. And Jesus asked him a simple question. Do you want to be made whole? I mean, do you want to rise up? I mean, I have the power and I have the strength. I have what you need, but I need you to decide if you actually want to rise up. Do you want to be made whole? Do you want the relationship to work out? Do you want the marriage to last? Do you want your children to be saved? Do you want to be better in a better financial situation? Do you want to be made whole? And instead of answering Jesus, this man does exactly what many of us do today. Huh? 
I'll read it to you. The impotent man, verse seven, John chapter five and verse seven. I'm not going to be much longer, but I love this. He's in the right position. And now he's whining about his problems. Jesus says, do you want to be made whole? And the Bible says in verse seven of John chapter five, the impotent man answered him, sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into. I mean, he understands that he can't get in the pool by himself. And so he's humbled himself. He's waiting on the right opportunity. He's waiting on the right chance uh, for him to actually rise up and be placed in the pool while the others around the pool have given up on jumping in the water, have given up and rising up, have given up on their relationships, have given up on on their children this man still had a little hope left and so he got in the right position and now he's garnered the attention of jesus can you all see it he has the, he has the opportunity to rise up and jesus asked him a question do you want to be made whole and his response is a response like ours sir can you hear him crying i have no man. Oh, come on, hear me on this today. I mean, he is waiting on man to do what only Jesus Christ can do. And I believe the thing that is keeping the church from rising to the level that Christ has called us to rise to, even in the midst of COVID-19, even in the midst of economic downturn, even in the midst of racial inequity, Christ is still calling his church to rise up and the thing that's keeping us from rising up is we're whining about our problems. We all got problems. Problems are equal opportunity employers. But the difference between uh, somebody else and the Christian is, for the Christian, we've got Jesus on our side. And Jesus is the great problem solver. The question is, do you want to be made whole? Sir, every time I try to work on my man, Jesus says, that's not what I asked you. I asked you a simple question that requires a simple answer. Do you want to be made whole? Yes or no, sir? Every time I try to get my children involved, that's not what I asked you. I said, do you actually want to rise up? And instead of answering Jesus, many of us would rather whine about our problems. We are always looking at what somebody else has and what somebody else is doing and what somebody else, and we start talking about, I don't have nobody to do me like what they are doing. And I don't have the support that they have. And uh, Jesus says, that's not what I asked you. I asked you a simple question. Do you want to be made whole. I'm not concerned about uh, the impotent and I'm not concerned about the blind and the withered and the hard. I've come to you because obviously you're in the right position, a position of humility, but now you want to waste your time by whining about your problems. And I need somebody to hear the preacher today that it's time for us to stop whining. It's time for us to stop crying over stuff that we should not be crying about. It's time for us to stop uh, being immature about stuff that we should have a clear uh, maturity about now. Just because they're not speaking to you doesn't mean they dislike you. And even if they dislike you, even if they're not speaking to you, it's not to the level for you to whine about. You ought to be thankful that even if they don't speak to you, at least Jesus speaks to you. And if you got Jesus, that's all you need. We've got to get to the point where we stop whining about our problems because it's preventing us from rising up. Jesus says, here you are, man. You're in the right position. But now you're so concerned 
about your problems. You're waiting on some man to do for you what only I can do for you. You're waiting on what for man to come through for you when I'm the only one that can come through for you. You're waiting on man to bless you when I'm the only one that can really bless you. You are waiting on man to do what man has never been designed to do, and that is to save you. And I'm here to tell somebody that we've got to stop depending on men to do for us what only Christ is willing and able and capable of doing for us. It's Jesus that will give us the strength to rise up. And I'm here to tell you, family, it's time to rise. And the way we get there is we've got to get in the right position, but we got to stop whining about our problems. And I love this. I'm done. I love this. I kept you longer than I intended. I tried to be 20 minutes or less. But I love this text because here is this man in the right position. He's whining about his problems. And yet Jesus hangs in there with him. <laughs> I'll say it again. If nobody else is happy, I'm happy all by myself because I know it's time to rise up. And Jesus stays with him even in the midst of his crying, even in the midst of his whining, anybody listening to me, even in the midst of his being uh, uh, degrading on himself, being down on himself, Jesus stays right there. Now, if we were to just be honest for a quick moment here, I mean, imagine you and I are trying to be a blessing to somebody and, and, and they need a ride uh, to the store and, and you're there to provide them with a ride. And, and you said, I'm here to, to give you a ride to the store, but they start whining. Well, what I really need is a, that's not what I, you need a ride. Let me give you the ride. Somebody need a, 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 a $10 and you're trying to be a blessing to them. You're giving them $10 and they start whining about the $10. What I, what I really, no, 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 no. Your bank account is in the next negative by 10. If I give you 10, at least it will be at zero. But see, because we love to spend so much time whining, we miss out on the blessings of God and the opportunities to rise up. And for many of us, uh, if it were our, uh, if it was in our purview uh, to be a blessing to somebody and they start whining, we would leave them where we found them. But the good news is that's not how Jesus is. Jesus doesn't leave this man like he found him. Even in his whining state, Jesus stays right there with him. Jesus stays in there with him and he keeps working with him because he knows that the thing that this man needs the most is an opportunity, the opportunity to rise up. And so he stays right there with him. And I love it. Here's what the Bible says, and I'll get out of your hand. Uh, Jesus saith unto him in verse 8, rise, take up thy bed, and walk. And verse 9 says, and immediately, oh, y'all didn't hear me. Jesus stays right here with this gentleman, understanding that he's been like this for 38 years. And I love how uh, Aunt Ellen uh, in Desire of Ages says, even though this man had been there for 38 years, he was not 38 years old. There were some horrible decisions. There were some bad decisions that he made early on in his life life. And because of his bad decisions, they have caused him to be where he is for 38 years. Like, let me come a little closer to somebody uh, besides myself and testify that some of us have been where we are and it's not somebody else's fault. It's not because nobody gave you a chance. It's not because you didn't have an opportunity to get a good education. Some of us are where we are because of our own volition. We've made some bad decisions. We've messed up. We took some wrong turns. We were disobedient to the instructions of the, of the living God. And because of that, 
it has caused us to be lame. But the good news is Jesus is standing in front of us. The good news is he is extending grace and mercy to all of us. And he's not doing it based on how faithful we've been. He's not doing it based on our church attendance. He's not doing it based on our tithe envelope filling out. He's doing it based on the fact that he's in love with people like you and I. And so he stays right there with us and he works with us because all he wants us to do is rise up. And I love it. Jesus looks at him and he says, rise, my brother, take up your bed and walk in the right position. He started whining about his problems. But when Jesus told him to rise, take up thy bed and walk, all of a sudden, his ankles got strong. All of a sudden, his calf muscles kicked in. All of a sudden, his knees that were once buckling uh, start strengthening up. All of a sudden, he's able to stand to his feet, and he can't help but give God some praise. And I'm here to tell somebody that it's time for you to rise up. I'm here to tell somebody it's time for you to get up. I'm here to tell somebody it's time for you to get moved because Christ is standing in front of you today and he said it's time to rise and because of that you must give him praise in the right position whining about his problems and yet Jesus stays right there with him and tells him to rise take up his bed and walk and for that reason alone, he begins to give Jesus Christ the praise. Today, I believe unequivocally, without a shadow of a doubt, as you matriculate through this month of February under this theme, uh, it's time to rise. Uh, I believe that Christ is going to come to you personally and offer you the invitation. Do you want to rise up? Do you actually want to be made whole? Well, family, I'll tell you, it's time to rise up. It's time to get up. It's time to move for Jesus Christ. And the only reason why you are living today is because he wants to give you that opportunity to rise up. It's time. The time to do it is right now. What do you say? Will you rise up? Will you get up? Or will you continue to whine about your problem? We all got problems from the preacher to the person behind the screen. We all got problems, but we've got the problem solver, Jesus, who stays with us even in the midst of our problems to become the problem solver so that we in turn will give him praise when we rise up to do his bidding. I'm ready to rise up. And not just for the month of February, but from now until eternity. I'm ready to have a better attitude. I'm ready to engage in whatever it takes to have a better marital relationship, to have a greater connection with my children, to have a greater spiritual relationship with my heavenly father. I'm ready to rise above jealousy and hatred and, and, and envy against people in my own family, people in my own church. No, no, no. I'm not gonna hang around this pool waiting on some water to be troubled when I've got Jesus standing in front of me and all I have to do is answer him. Do you wanna rise up? Yes or no? I say yes today. If you say yes today, drop it in the chat. I say yes to Jesus Christ. I say yes to rising up. I say yes to going forward. That's my desire. I pray it's your desire as well. Father, in the name of Jesus, 
Thank you so much for the opportunity to hear you say to us, do we want to be made whole? And today, Father, we're not going to be complex. We're not going to come back with a, with a response that is longer than a yes or a no. Either we want to or we don't. It's not complicated. All we have to do is answer you. We're in the right position, a position of humility. We realize we need help. But don't let us start whining about our problems and miss out on an opportunity to say yes to you. Because when we say yes, then our natural and appropriate response is to give you the praise. It's time for us to rise up. And today we are willing to do so, to take our rightful space and place right here, right now. Bless our pastor and first lady and help us, Father, as they continue to follow you, may we be willing to follow them as well. May we all rise this day going forward in the worthy name of Jesus. Let every heart say amen and amen. God bless you today. May the Lord continue to shine upon you. May he give you peace and strength to answer him whether or not you're going to rise up today. I say yes to him. What about you? God bless.
Sanders family, thank you so much for blessing us with that powerful song. It's amazing to see a father and son minister for Christ and lead people in worship. And to Pine Forge Academy Choir, y'all sang us, y'all sang us to heaven. Thank you so much for your ministry. Pastor Vandion Griffin, what a word, what a word. Uh, thank you for listening to the Lord and being faithful to deliver his message to us. And now for all of us, we've heard God's word. We've worshiped him, but it's not enough to hear the word. God is challenging us to apply it. So before the end of today, my challenge for you is to spend some time in prayer asking God how you can apply what you learned today to your life so that your life can be transformed and so that together as a community, we can become more like Jesus. Well, it's offering time. And maybe in other places, offering time is a time to, you know, uh, be depressed or be down. I don't know. But here in this church, offering time is a time to celebrate. Uh, it's a celebration because we have an opportunity to give to a God who has so faithfully given unto us. Not only that, but we have an opportunity to sow a seed in the mission of our church. And we exist to take Sacramento for the King. On a daily basis, our church is involved in mission opportunities here in the city that is changing the lives of the people in our neighborhood and across our region. And we want you to partner with us in that. And so right now, the giving options are on the screen. You can choose to go to the church website, www.capitalcitysda.org. And there are two giving options there, uh, Adventist Giving or the Giving Kiosk. Or you can choose to give through Cash App, and the Cash App handle is on the screen. And then finally, if you would choose to write a check and put it in the mail, you can send it to the P.O. box listed on the screen. As we say to you every week, we promise you that we will be faithful stewards of every penny and it will be used to make Jesus famous and to complete his mission, both in this city and across the world. It's been a blessing worshiping God with you on today. I pray that you were filled and encouraged. And now I'd like to pray a blessing over your week. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit walk with you. Open up doors that you can't close and close some doors that you need not open. Thank you so much, God, for being with us. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful Saturday.